Let me tell you a story about a couple of guys named Bob and Ed. Uh, they hadn't seen one another in quite a while, but by chance they happened to run into one another on the street. Bob looked down the boulevard and he thought to himself, why, well, I think that's my old friend Ed. So Bob made his way down a couple of storefronts and uh, he arrived where Ed was standing. And he thought to himself, oh yes, this is indeed my old friend Ed. So he said, Ed, it's your old friend Bob. Well, Ed turned to look at Bob and although Ed was genuinely glad to see Bob, his face showed that something was wrong. Bob said, Ed, it's great to see you, but you look a little down. Is everything okay? Ed said, not really, I do have a bit of a problem. Bob said, well, maybe that's why fate put us together today. What is your problem? Ed said, well, three weeks ago, I said three weeks ago, my uncle died, and he left me $40,000. Bob said, well, that's a lot of money. That's not why I'm upset. You see, two weeks ago, I said two weeks ago, <laughs> my favorite cousin Mary died, and she left me $85,000. Bob said, wow, it sounds like you've been blessed financially, but I do understand why you'd be so upset, Mary being your favorite cousin and all. Ed said, you don't understand, that's not why I'm upset. You see, last week, I said last week, my great aunt, who I loved so much, she died, and she left me almost a quarter of a million dollars. Bob said, that is an awful lot of money, but if you loved her that much, I totally understand why you were so upset. Ed said, you got it all wrong, that's not why I'm upset. Bob said, well, I must admit, I am very confused now, so tell me, why do you look so down? Ed said, this week, nothing. <laughs> Sometimes get to the point when we become so used to receiving God's blessings. God gives to us so generously and graciously that we may take God's blessings for granted. And rather than showing our gratitude for each blessing, we simply wait around for the next one. Today's scripture reading from Psalm 138 begins by saying, I give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Now, when we read this today, this idea of giving thanks with our whole heart illustrates for us an image of thanks coming from love, doesn't it? Uh, thanking God with a, with a loving heart. And it is a part saying that. But let me tell you a little bit of information that might allow us to better understand what the psalmist might have been trying to convey when he wrote this psalm. For those of you who are in Bible study, you probably will, this will sound familiar, this explanation, because we've talked about this a few times. To better understand what the psalmist was really saying when he wrote thanking God with his whole heart, it is important to understand how people of that period understood the heart. At that time, and even later way into when Christ was on the earth, people viewed the heart in a very different way than they do today. They actually believed the heart to be the center of thought, Bible study, does anybody remember? Morals and intentions. They believed our decisions were partially made using our actual heart. So to thank God with one's whole heart would have meant to thank God in a, in, a, in a variety of ways. It would have meant giving thanks to God through our thoughts, giving thanks to God through our morals, and giving thanks to God through our intentions. To give thanks to God through our thoughts can literally be giving thanks to prayer. It can purely be the act of prayers of gratitude. You know, I think it's very important when we pray, and I try to always begin each prayer by giving thanks to God. Even in our, if our intention is to make a request of God, I think we should always begin by expressing our gratitude. When we begin by giving prayers, uh, uh, thanks through prayers of thought, we are reminded that uh, of the awesome power of God. We're reminded of, of, of the presence of God and we're reminded of our intimacy with God. And giving thanks through prayer also satisfies another aspect of showing gratitude through thought. Here it is. When we give thanks through prayer, we acknowledge our gifts. We acknowledge that we've been blessed, we acknowledge that we are loved, and we acknowledge that each of our gifts has been given through God's grace. So thanking God through our thoughts, uh, that is the first aspect of giving thanks wholeheartedly. The second aspect, I'd say the second aspect, the second aspect 
when we give thanks to God through our morals. We thank God through the principles to be humble, to be generous. The more answers that we can answer yes to these questions and others like them, the more we say thank you to God. We give thanks by keeping our understanding of what is right aligned with what has been conveyed to us through God's Son, Jesus Christ. The third part, I said third part, the third part of giving thanks with our, third, just going to work it. <laughs> the third part of giving thanks with our whole heart would be giving thanks through our intentions. Our intentions would be the planning out, the playing out of our morals, of our ethics. Our intentions would be what our heart has planned and executed forward through action. So, so we wish to treat others as we would like to be treated. Great. But do we? We wish to be forgiving and patient, perfect. But are we? We find it important to be loyal and humble and generous. But do we follow through on what we say we find important? Following through on the morals that we hold dear and that are aligned with the wishes of God, this is how we say thank you to God. So those are the three ways that the psalmist may have been trying to wholeheartedly thank God when he wrote this psalm. But I would like to add one more way that I believe that we should thank God when we do so wholeheartedly. I think it is important to thank God for things for which we might not usually think about giving thanks. To wholeheartedly thank God, we need to give thanks for even the trials and the difficulties in our lives. The many events in our lives that, although we don't always see it, can, as today's psalm said, increase our strength of soul. There's a Scottish preacher by the name of George Matheson. And he realized that even though he was a man of faith, he had trouble with the idea of giving thanks to God when things weren't going right. But at one point in his life, George began to lose his eyesight, and that changed his way of thinking. He spent months struggling with the, with the burden of losing his sight until he came to terms with it, and he came to terms with God. And he wrote this prayer. My God, I have never thanked you for my thorn. I have thanked you a thousand times for my roses, but not once for my thorn. I have been looking forward to a world where I shall get compensated for my cross, but I have never thought of my cross as itself a present glory. Teach me the value of my thorn. Amen. Giving thanks to God for all that we are given is so important. I hope this idea of giving thanks to God with our whole heart is something that we can all embrace. Giving thanks through more than just our words. As we leave this place, may we walk with hearts that are full of gratitude, hearts that are yearning to express our thanks to our God who is full of grace and provides for us through a steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me?